Back then, it was the winter of 2003. My third year at the university, and I didn't have much direction in my life. I was majoring in liberal arts, which isn't much of a step up from just being undeclared. I learned a lot in the past year, however. How to shotgun a beer, how to find a girl's MySpace without her last name, how to text lightning fast on a mobile brick that didn't even have T9. More importantly than any of these things, I learned how to get rid of the bitch. I didn't even know how to play Hearts five years ago when my parents bought our first computer. A Windows 98 with a four gigabyte hard drive, and it came pre-installed along with Solitaire. But I became a master of the game when the four of us started playing for stakes. Hearts isn't that complicated. Hand after hand, we dealt out the entire deck evenly. We were dealing when the Space Shuttle Columbia was destroyed. We were dealing a month later when the United States invaded Iraq, and another month later when Apple introduced something called the iTunes Store. After the deal, we'd trade cards depending on which round it was. My friend Matt was a master at eliminating a suit from his hand during this stage. I'd known Matt since our days together on the high school bowling team. After trading, tricks would be played four cards at a time, each player playing one card in succession. And they had to be in the same suit as the winner of the previous trick chose. Cards could be played out of suit only if you didn't have any in suit to play. And that's the time when you could lay down hearts or that bitch the queen of spades, because she was worth 13 points, while each heart was only worth one. The winner of the trick took the points. First player to 100 ends the game, and the lowest score wins. Fred liked to hunt her highness. If he had a lot of spades in his hand, he'd play them hand after hand until a poor bastard who had her in his hand was forced to lay it down and take the points. I'd met Brett in happier times at an MST3K screening at the campus theater which left Carl. He's bitch hunting. He's bitch hunting. We didn't actually know Carl. He had showed up drunk on our doorstep one Friday night, looking for a party, but finding a deck of cards and a detached reality instead. What's up, Matt? <sighs> Failed another test. Well, well, look on the bright side of me. You're still at 50 bucks on me after last night. Maybe I was using money to hire someone to write my thesis for me. Well, you need an idea first. <laughs> well, it's time to think when you're chasing the bitch. Oh, so we still on for tonight? What day is today? Does it matter? Good point. I'll see you in an hour. Show up. Oh, hold on, it's Brett. One second. Hey man, you coming over? Yeah, I'll be there on time. You know I always am. You should bring that girlfriend of yours over sometime, huh? No, why would I do that when you just charm her away from me, dude? Well, that was the idea. <laughs> I'm dropping the bitch on you for that tonight, man. All right, man, see ya. Oh, hey, are you coming to my dad's birthday party next week? Yeah, just let me know what time to show up. We lived the same night over and over again. We were playing hearts while my parents got divorced. We were playing hearts while Matt's sister became a doctor. And while Carrie decided to dump me. Guess I should have gone to that dinner after all. Eventually something had to give. Dude? Hey man, come on in. <sighs> no can do, man. I got kicked out. Academic dishonesty. You know, I was just trying to keep my head above water. So what happens now? I got cut off. Parents are dragging me back to Maine. And you know what? <laughs> Screw it. Let's play tonight. Yeah. I rarely think of those days, but when I do, all I remember is hearts, and nothing of the world that was going on around us. There's another play in hearts. It's called Shooting the Moon. And if you manage to collect every point, every heart, and the bitch, everyone else gets 26 points instead of you. Basically, if you get dealt a bad enough hand, you can work it out in the end. Almost everyone ends up living inside a bubble at some point in their lives. You just have to know when to pop it.